Let's pray. Father, in the name of Jesus, we thank you, O God, for your love for us. Thank you for our children. Thank you for all the works that you are doing in us, in the lives of our children and their teachers. We appreciate you, our Heavenly Father. Please, Papa, let your blessings continue to flow, O God, even this day. Thank you, Father. In Jesus' mighty name, we have prayed. Amen. This hour, we want to ask ourselves this question. What difference are you making? Or what difference am I making? So the question is, what difference are you making? And by God's grace, I want to look at it in seven segments. Difference in your own life. Difference in your family. Difference in the person near to you. Difference in the church. Difference in the society. Difference in the nation. And difference in the entire whole world. We all can make differences. It is a possible thing to make a difference in these seven segments. We have read a story of the man called Joseph, a man that typifies, a man that is a typical example of one who made difference in his own life, in all of this particular stage, a particular point. And that point, no matter how wonderful it is, no matter how glorious it is, can be improved upon. And those points, those stages, those places that are no good at all, we can make a difference. And by so doing, change the narrative, change the status quo to become something that everyone will see and know that there has been a change. To make a difference means to bring about a change. To bring about, to think and to do whatsoever that needs to be done in order that a change may be seen. And it has to begin with your own life. It begins with our lives. Joseph, we know his story very, very well. How it is that in the midst of all the trouble that he went through, he made a difference, number one, when he was assaulted by Potiphar's wife with the intention of having affairs with him sexually. He said, no way. He made a difference in his life. He made a difference in his life also. When his brothers who sold him and subjected him to the trouble, to the harassment, to the anguish that he went through before he became the prime minister, when he met with them, he introduced himself as Joseph, the one that they sold. Joseph, I am Joseph, your brother. You sold me. And when the brothers tended to feel sad, when they behaved in a manner that showed their discontent with what they did, he told them, no, you don't need to be unhappy. You don't need to stress yourself. No, God actually sent you ahead of time. He used you to send me ahead of time to preserve life. So you don't need to be in any way worried or be concerned about what you did to me. By so doing, the weight that he was carrying, the weight of the fact that his brothers were the ones that betrayed him, that sold him, that weight was lifted. He made a change. He made a difference in his life. When you forgive somebody, when you release those people that you have been carrying burdens upon because of what they did to you, you make a difference in your life. What difference are you making? Number one, I said, what difference are you making in your life? In verses 3 to 5 of the book of Genesis 47 that we have read, he says, and Joseph said unto his brethren, I am Joseph, that my father yet live. And his brethren could not answer him, for they were troubled at his presence. And Joseph said unto his brethren, come near to me, I pray you. 
And they came near. And he said, I am Joseph, your brother, whom you sold into Egypt. Now therefore, be not grieved. Not angry with yourselves that you sold me hither. For God did send me before you to preserve life. Look at what he did. That was making a difference. When you are carrying burdens, many people who have hurt you, who have done things that you are not pleased with, you can make up your mind and say, I will make a difference. You release them. Take away the load. See, Joseph told them, no, don't be grieved. No, 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 no. Don't be afraid. Don't be unhappy. Don't be unhappy. By doing that, he made a difference in his own life. Because he did not hold those things against them anymore. He was positive about what they did. He told them, even though you meant it for evil, but God sent me, used you to send me here to preserve life. What difference are you making in your life? It is expected that those of us who have been living habitually in sin should deliberately make up our minds this month and going forward to say there must be a change. I must see a change in my life. I must see a change and go for it. And may the almighty God grant you your desire even as you deliberately make efforts in Jesus' name. Number two, what difference are you making in your family? By what Joseph did, by what he did, he made a difference. Because the father, he told them, don't be grieved. And they were already afraid. They were already feeling very guilty. He made a difference in his family. But outside of that, look at what he did. He brought them before Pharaoh and gave them as, of course, he brought them before Pharaoh. He had already kept them. He already kept them in the place called Goshen, Goshen in the land of the Ramses. He put, he put them, them there, there and that was the best place in Egypt. Egypt. That's, That's where Joseph put, put his brothers that sold him. That's where he put his father that was old. Making a difference. What difference are you making in your family? How many of your family members are you touching their lives? How many of them are you changing their situations? How many? I pray. That you make up your mind to make a difference. And as you do, God will bless you in Jesus' name. What difference are you making in the life of someone near you? In the lives of those who are near you. What difference are you making? You see people all the time. You see them look certain ways. You see them behave in certain ways. And you know that this is not appropriate. You know that this is not right. Are you making any difference in the life of those people? When you preach the gospel to a sinner, the sinner that has come by you, and the person repents, and receives Jesus Christ as Lord and Savior, you have made a difference in the life of that individual. What difference are you making in the life of those that are near you? Second Kings chapter 4. Verses 8 to 10. Second Kings chapter 4, verses 8 to 10. And it fell on a day that Elisha passed to Shunem, which was <clears throat> where was a great woman, and she constrained him to eat bread. And so it was that as oft as he passed by, he turned in thither to eat bread. And she said unto her husband, Behold, now I perceive that this is an holy man of God which passeth by us continually. Let us make a little chamber, I pray thee, on the wall, and let us set for him there a bed, a table, a stool, a candlestick, and it shall be when he cometh to us that he shall turn in. Theta. The woman, the great woman of Shunem, look at the difference he made in the life of the man of God. Prophet Elisha. Passing by, please, man of God, come and eat. And the man of God will go and eat. 
after he had been fed, he will go out and begin to do the assignment that God has assigned him to do. Every time he passes by, they will ask him to come. Elisha made that place a place of his having to be refreshed. And there was no complaint. The woman didn't complain. The husband didn't complain. And yet, there was no child in that marriage. Many of us, we want to make a difference when everything is perfect. When everything is very rosy, that's when you want to make a difference. Learn from these people. Learn from them. Know that God wants us. No matter the state that we are in, as long as we have this breath and we have the ability to cause a change in the life of someone or in a society or someone near us, you must make that difference. They built him a room where he was coming all the time. And of course, you know the story. The prophet Elisha made a, a difference also in the life of that woman and the husband and their family. What difference are you making, brother and sister? Number four. What difference are you making in the church? What difference are you making in the church? Amongst the brethren, amongst those who are called children of God, what difference are you making? What difference are you making? Brothers and sisters, God wants us on a daily basis as we have this bread to make the difference that we're supposed to make. Galatians chapter 2. Galatians chapter 2, verses 11 to 17. Galatians chapter 2, 11 to 17. A story, a story of Peter, the rest of the apostles, with the Gentiles, the Jews, and of course, Paul, the apostle. A story is told of a behavior that Peter, who was the head of the church, was noted for. And it was unacceptable. He was the head of the church. But in order that a difference might be made in the life of Peter, Paul observed the behavior, the incorrect, inappropriate behavior of Peter. And Paul rose up to the occasion to correct it. In verse 14, he says, But when I saw that they walked not uprightly, that is Peter and those who were with him, including Barnabas, when I saw that they walked not uprightly, according to the truth of the gospel, I said unto Peter, Before them all, if thou being a Jew, Live it after the manner of Gentiles and not as do the Jews. Why compellest thou the Gentiles to live as do the Jews? Peter's behavior, wanting now not to associate with those who were regarded as the uncircumcised, just because some Hebrews, some Jews were gathered. Meanwhile, he had ate with them before when there were no Jews. He had dined with them. Now that the Jews were around, he want, wants to take himself away from them, to pull out because they were uncircumcised. Paul saw that behavior and he said because they didn't behave appropriately. I spoke to Peter at the hearing and in the hearing of everybody else, if you being Jews behave this way, why do you want to compare the Gentiles to behave the way of the Jews? Meanwhile, the Jews are supposed to be uh, free from sin. They are supposed to be free from any guy. They are supposed to be free people who are noted to be upright. And you walk this way, and you want them to now behave like the, the Jews. That correction. That statement. That behavior of Paul. Brought about a change. Because Paul reported. The scripture reported. That even Barabbas. Have been deceived into that kind of behavior. When you see people behaving, your brother, your sister, even your pastor, 
pastors behaving in a manner that you know is contrary to the truth. Do you approach them to say this is not right? We must all make every necessary difference that is expected in the church. What is it that you are doing in the church? You come to church every Sunday good what difference are you making in the church? Ask yourself and answer yourself. It's the amount of making a difference. When you ask yourself, you should be able to get the answer. And when the answer is no difference, then you must be determined. You must be deliberate about it to say, I will make a difference in the church. Where I'm worshiping, I will make a difference. People will know of a truth that I belong to this church. Not for sure, no, not for sure. But simply because by your service, someone else, the church, has been moved from the state where the church was to a better state, a better stage, just because you decided to make a difference. We all, brothers and sisters, must be engaged in something that shows that we are making several differences, even in the church. What difference are you making in the society or in your locality? Many of us live in estates. What difference are you making? What is it? Is there anything that you can say that this community no, have noted you for? Some of us can be making differences in our communities by people marking you as somebody who does not compromise. By people marking you as somebody who will tell the truth at all times. By having to come to you when they are in difficulties that you are able to solve. What difference are you making in this society? As of the Apostles chapter 9, verses 36 to 39, the story of Dacus, Dacus who was also called Talita. Now, as of the Apostles chapter 9, verses 36 to 39, now there was at Joppa a certain disciple named Tabitha, which by interpretation is called Dacus. This woman was full of good works and arms this which she did. And it came to pass in those days that she was sick and died. Whom when they had washed, they laid her in an upper chamber. And for as much as Lydia was near to Joppa, and the disciples heard that Peter was there, they sent unto him to men, desiring him that he would not delay to come to them. Then Peter arose and went with them. When he was come, they brought him into the upper chamber and all the widows stood by for him weeping and showing the coats and garments which Dockers made while she was with them. The Bible tells us of this woman Dockers in the society, she was noted for good deeds. Good deeds. Beautiful works. That when she died, widows were showing. Look at the dress. Meaning, she knew she was a seamstress. She knew how to sew things. Many of you do know. You do know. At all times, many of you will want to be paid money. Brothers and sisters, it's not everything that you do that you are supposed to ask for money. It's not everything. Doc has made a great difference. What difference are you making in the society? In the society. You are to answer this question. And I want to say to you, you cannot have an answer of I am making no difference because 
There is nothing that I have. In our text, we read about Jacob, the father of Joseph, being brought before Pharaoh. Why did Jacob and his children, his entire family, migrate from Canaan to Egypt? Why? Hunger. Famine. No food. When Jacob was brought before Pharaoh, the man who everybody will expect had everything, what did Jacob do? Bible tells us that Jacob blessed Pharaoh. He blessed Pharaoh. He blessed Pharaoh. With what? I have no idea. But if the Bible tells us he blessed Pharaoh, it means he blessed Pharaoh. He made a difference in the life of Pharaoh. He didn't say, by the way, the children of Jacob, when they were brought before Pharaoh, and Pharaoh asked them questions, they responded back to Pharaoh and said, you are servants. You are servants. Your servants are this. We are henchmen. We take care of animals. You are servants. When Jacob was brought before Pharaoh, there was no usage of that language. You are servant. Why? Because Jacob knew his position in Christ, in God. He knew that even though they came to Egypt because of hunger, he knew that who he was in God has not been removed. And that's why what he was in God, he used to bless Pharaoh. Brothers and sisters, what are you doing? What differences are you making in this society? What is it? God expects each and every one of us to make a difference in this society. As of the Apostles chapter 9, verses 36 to 39. Now, I read again. When Paul, sorry, Peter was called, what did he do? Peter made a difference in the life of who? In the life of Dorcas. Because he was brought back to life. What difference are you making? Are you involved in praying? Are you praying for people with all your heart, with the mind of seeing change? Or you just do it just for doing sake? A religious practice. What difference are you making? Number six, what difference are you making in your nation? What difference? Are you making any difference in the nation? I know many of you will say, what difference can I make in my nation? You can make a lot of difference. You can, brother, you can, sister. All it requires is a deliberate determination, conscious determination to make a difference. It may be in this secret place. But you pour out your heart. You target that there must be a change in this direction. And focus on it until you see a change. We all can make various differences. In the book of 1 Samuel chapter 17. 1 Samuel chapter 17 verses 23 and 24. The Bible says, And as he talked with them, that is David, Behold, there came up the champion, the Philistine of God. Goliath by name out of the armies of the Philistines and spake according to the same words and David had. And all the men of Israel, when they saw the man fled from him and were so afraid. In verse 32 we read, and David said to Saul, let no man's heart fail because of him. That servant will go and fight with the Philistines. 
All the soldiers of Israel were afraid. And before King Saul, David made a difference. Even before fight, he went to fight Goliath, he said, let no man's heart faint because of these Philistines. I will go. All of you stay back. I will go. Brother, you can make a difference. Sister, you can make a difference. You can take up an issue that is not right in this nation and go before the Lord until a change comes. People may not know by whom such a change came, but God will record it for you. You can make a difference. What difference are you making in the nation? Now, you can also make a difference in the entire world. And you ask me how? Well, you begin from the world that is near you. You begin from there, the world near you. And when you begin and you begin and you do such things that people will see and it will be attached to you. When the story will be told anywhere, they will be making reference to you. You can do something that when preachers hear, they will go to another place as they are preaching in another nation. They will give you as an example. They will use you as an example. And when that is happening, that is that difference. You are making a difference in that nation. Those who are hearing what God did through you or what you did, the difference that you made will be touched and they will begin to also move in the same direction. You can make a difference. Brothers and sisters, we can make a difference in the world we are living in. We can. And I want you to be deliberate about it. Make up your mind. Like I told our brother in the first service, all of us are going to sleep a sleep unto death one day. Doesn't matter who you are. So, wanting to be accumulating wealth, accumulating wealth, and you want to accumulate to a certain level before you can venture into the assignment that God wants you to venture into, you're making a mistake. Anybody, anyone can sleep anytime, any day, and not wake up. With all the dreams, with all the desires to support God's work. But the issue will be, what difference did you make when you were here, when you were alive, when, when you, you had, had a little? little what, what difference did you make? Acts of the Apostles, chapter 17, verses 5 to 7. Acts of the Apostles, 17, 5 to 7. But the Jews, which believed not, moved with envy, took up, took unto them certain lewd fellows of the baser sort and gathered a company and set all the city on an uproar and assaulted the house of Jason and sought to bring them out to the people. And when they found them not, they drew Jason and certain brethren unto the rulers of the city, crying, These that have turned the world upside down are come hither also. I just want to stop there. What is their testimony? Even though they were giving that testimony in the negative, but for us, that was a testimony. It's a testimony in the positive. These that turned the world upside down. That was their decision. But who would say, they turned the world upside down and up. Because by the preaching of the gospel, lives were changed. Deliverances happened. That was their testimony. They turned the world upside down. Brethren like us. And that's why we must go. Everywhere God wants us to go. Everywhere he gives enablement to go. We must go. So that changes will happen into such places. Brothers and sisters. I enjoin you by the mercies of God. Make up your mind. To make a difference. And don't say. I have nothing. 
That is not the truth. Everybody has something to cause a difference in the life of any other person. Everybody. Everybody. At least Jacob is a typical example. Hunger pursued him from the land of Canaan to Egypt. Hunger. Right there, he still made a difference by blessing Pharaoh, the king of Egypt. But how can this happen? There is a challenge. There is a challenge. Because brothers and sisters, after we have made up our mind deliberately to cause a change, to make a difference, we will still need God on our side. And God himself has promised in the book of Isaiah chapter 41 verse 13. Isaiah 41 verse 13. He said, For I the Lord thy God withhold thy right hand saying unto thee, Fear not, I will help thee. That's what God is saying. He will hold us by our right hand saying to us, Fear not. You desire to make a difference? It is possible. Fear not. You make a difference. In closing, Job chapter 8 verse 20 says, Behold God, Job 8 20, Behold God will not cast away a perfect man, neither will he help the evil doers. Who are evil doers? Evil doers are those people who after they have received good, Instead of responding positively to the good they have received, they respond negatively. After someone has been given life by God, and if that person turns against the God who has given him or her life, that person is an evil doer. And the Bible has told us, God will not help that person. And so, everybody can change. Everybody can become somebody. You can become better. If you are without Christ, you can on your own. Nobody will force you. Decide and say, today I am moving towards making a difference in my life. And what will you be required to do? Simply to confess your sins to God and ask Jesus Christ to have mercy on you to forgive you your sins and ask him to come into your life. Be your Lord and your Savior. That difference will have been registered. Because 2 Corinthians chapter 5 verse 17 tells us. Therefore, if any man be in Christ, he is a new creature. Difference. Difference. When you come to Christ, a difference is made in your life. A new creature. All things are passed away. Behold, all things have become new. Shall we be upstanding, brothers and sisters? Let's pray. Father, thank you for your word. Thank you for giving us this bread of life. And thank you for your promise to help us. Thank you for your promise to hold us by our right hand. To lead us in the way. And to help us to attain unto that which we are deliberate about. I pray, Lord, that you will help each and every one whose mind is made up concerning making a difference. Help everyone, Lord, and let there be great, great, great difference. Not only in our lives, in our families, in the life of those near us, in the church, in the society at large, in the nation, and in the world. In all of this, oh God, because you are the one that is at work in us, both to will and to do of your good pleasures, may the glory, the honor, the praise, and the thanksgiving be yours now and forever. In Jesus' mighty name, we have prayed. Amen. God bless you.